What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now we are on the final chapter of the SSI Open Water Diver Program. So that is chapter six for you guys. And we're going to try to get finished up today. And hopefully this video and the series of videos we produced will help you pass your final exam. However, we do got to put a quick disclaimer. Please do not use our videos to learn how to properly go out there and dive. Make sure you're seeking out your local SSI open water instructor to do that. Like I said, just simply use our videos as a study guide to help you pass your final exam. So with that being said, let's jump into chapter six. So as we start out with chapter six, we want to focus on taking good care of ourselves. And now this just simply means remaining healthy. You don't have to be a bodybuilder to be a scuba diver, but you do need to be healthy. You need to be able to exert a ton of energy when you're underwater without overexertion or causing yourself too much overexertion. You need to be able to control your breathing while diving. And if we do anything that causes us problems while breathing, such as smoking or being unhealthy and things like that, then of course we're even going to have problems underwater. So we want to refrain from anything that's not going to be healthy for us. We do want to remain safe underwater and we want to be able to exert energy without overexertion while scuba diving. So the next thing that we're going to look at for chapter six is stress and panic. And a lot of people really become fearful of stress. Stress is not something we should fear. Stress actually keeps us on our toes. It keeps us level headed and it makes us think throughout the entire dive. Now there's several different types of stress out there from whether it's stress from our peers or a learned stress and stress can be real. It can be a physical thing that's causing it or it could just be a mental thing that's causing it. By simply breathing, we can really work through just about any type of stress we're going to come across. However, what we don't want to do is allow that stress to become panic. Once panic sets in, it's either fight our way out or flight our way out. So we need to make sure that we can manage that stress before it ever becomes panic. Now, during those stressful times, there may be a situation where you run low on air. Maybe you have an entanglement, or maybe you just have a simple leg cramp or something like that. During your open water program, your instructor is going to teach you how to deal with each and every one of those situations. The main thing is to remain calm, stop everything you're doing, breathe through it. Think about what's causing your problem, breathe through it, and then act upon that and then continue to breathe. There's a common denominator here of simply breathing. Breathing will solve a ton of problems when you're underwater. Just relax. Remember, you have a regulator, you have plenty of air in your cylinder, and you can simply breathe through and work through any problem that you may come across. Now, the next part of chapter six we're going to talk about is the decision matrix. And during your open water program, your instructor is going to teach you three different emergency scents that should be used in the event that say you run low on air or you run out of air. Now, obviously we teach you to watch your gauges, but sometimes equipment malfunctions can dictate things otherwise. The three ascents that you're going to learn are an alternate air source ascent where you're sharing air with your buddy. One is an emergency swim ascent. This is really designed to be used 30 foot and up. And of course the last is a buoyant emergency ascent, which is the last ditch effort to get back to the surface. This is where we actually ditch our weights underwater. Now these can be very dangerous skills to perform, so make sure you're doing it under the direct tutelage of your open water scuba instructor. So now that we finish the academic portion of the open water program, after chapter six, it is time to go out and do your confined water training. Now during your confined water training, you're gonna learn the basic skill set that all scuba divers have to learn. And then you're gonna go and perform four open water training dives as kind of a final evaluation to become a certified diver. Once you're a certified diver, it is a lifetime certification. You will never lose this certification. However, you can lose your skill set. So it's very important for you to gain as much experience as possible and to continue your education as a diver. So guys, we're coming to the end of chapter six here, and we're going to talk a little bit about that continued education there and what steps are next. Once you're certified, there is a slew of different specialty courses that you can take, and you can really pick whatever pathway you want to go. Do you want to go professional? Do you want to go technical? Do you want to go scientific? Do you want to go commercial or public safety or whatever pathway you want to lead? You need to sit down with your local SSI open water scuba instructor and see what courses they offer and what courses are going to be prerequisites to whatever your end goal is. There's so many different specialties out there to pick from. Sometimes it can be difficult, but if you set a goal of what you want, your open water scuba instructor from SSI can actually set you a pathway of courses to help you reach that goal in the future. 
So guys, that's going to do it for chapter six, and that's going to do it for our series on the SSI Open Water Diver Program. We really hope you enjoyed this series. We hope it helps you in the future passing your final open water exam from the SSI course. And if you got any questions, drop us a comment down below, and we'll try to answer your questions the best we can. Once again, guys, please do not use these videos as a way to properly learn how to dive. Make sure you're seeking out your local SSI Open Water Diver instructor to do so. We just simply would like for you to use our videos as a study guide to help you pass your final exam. But guys, that's going to be it for this series. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.